69, 69, Interstate 69. There are so many things we can say about 69, but in the case of this video, we're going to be talking about the new-ish superhighway being built across the heart of America. When it comes to America's interstate system, major routes traveling north and south usually end in five. Interstate 5, from the Mexican border in San Diego to the Canadian border in Washington State. Or Interstate 95, from Miami, Florida to the Canadian border in Halton, Maine. Interstate 69 is different. Despite ending in 9, it is planned to go from border to border, from Texas to Michigan. A short while back I asked you all on a poll when did you think we could see this highway fully completed. On this video, we're going to take a long, deep look at this amazing new superhighway as we explore what it is, why it's being built, and when we can expect to see it completed in each state. But first, I want to welcome you to the channel. I'm Mileage Mike, a frequent traveler, formerly designing the world as a civil engineer. Now I travel it, bringing you a first person look at the world through my lens and also discussing some of the things that I see along the way with videos like this one. So go ahead and hit that like button since I got you to click and subscribe if you would like to see more of this type of content. Now back to I-69. Now, Interstate 69 isn't exactly a new interstate highway. In fact, it was actually originally designated in 1957 as a route running from Indianapolis to Angola, Indiana. In 1968, the Federal Aid Highway Act authorized 1,500 new miles of interstate, which included a proposal from Michigan to extend I-69 northeast through Lansing, Flint, and Port Huron. The Federal Highway Administration only approved this route up to Interstate 475 in Flint, but late in 1987, it was approved to go to Port Huron. By 1992, I-69 was complete from Indianapolis to Port Huron, Michigan, but not so fast. Major new federal legislation related to transportation and planning was signed in 1991. This was called the Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act of 1991, or ICE-T. This was the largest piece of federal legislation on transportation since the interstate highway system itself. This act defined a whole slew of new highway corridors to be part of the national highway system. Among them were two corridors related to I-69. Corridor 18 was to travel from Indianapolis, Indiana to Memphis, Tennessee via Evansville, Indiana. Corridor 20 was to travel from Texarkana, Texas to the Mexican border in Laredo via Houston. The Department of Transportation and Related Agencies Appropriations Act of 1993 extended Corridor 18 further southwest to Houston. Then in 1995, the National Highway System Designation Act of 1995 added that Corridor 18 would also serve Mississippi and Arkansas. It even added a connection to Brownsville, Texas. This is the act that legally specified Corridors 18 and 20 as future parts of the interstate highway system to be built to interstate highway standards. It was in 1998 that I-69 was finally assigned to these future corridors. The Transportation Equity Act for the 21st Century, or T-21, expanding Corridor 18 to include the existing I-69, I-94 between Port Huron and Chicago, as well as the connection to Pine Bluff, Arkansas. This act also created a split of the corridor south of Victoria, Texas, with an I-69 east, central, and west splitting off and heading to the Mexican border, near the cities of Brownsville, McAllen, and Laredo, respectively. So with all these acts and legislation, the current overview of what you see here is what the one day fully completed I-69 NAFTA superhighway is theorized to look like from Port Huron, Michigan, to the three connections at the Mexican border in Texas. Stunning, bold, beautiful. But of course, like almost every infrastructure project, I-69 is not without opposition. First, it's the environmentalists. The section south of Indianapolis has met fierce resistance from them as it passes through several wetland areas, farmland, and forests. They argue that the highway and the development that it will bring will pollute the water systems and harm rare species living there. Eventually, Indiana pressed on and built the highway anyway. However, to no surprise, the biggest issue facing I-69's completion is money. It is estimated that finishing I-69 will cost around $25 billion, but the federal government has not provided funding for it. So it has been effectively left up to individual states to figure out how to fund I-69's construction. Louisiana, Tennessee, and Mississippi have stated that they will not build any more of I-69 until Congress opens the checkbook. All right, now that we understand what the highway is, where it's supposed to be going, and some of the obstacles in its way, let's see in detail where things stand in each state. For this one, 
we're going to start out in Michigan and work our way south to Texas. In Michigan, I-69 is complete. It begins at the Blue Water Bridge in Port Huron on a concurrency with I-94, where it quickly splits off and heads to Flint and the state capital of Lansing. It forms a part of a partial beltway around Lansing with I-96 and has a business spur route that travels into downtown. South of Lansing, it passes smaller towns like Charlotte and Coldwater before heading into Indiana. It has no interstate spurs nor auxiliary routes in Michigan. It is mostly a four-lane freeway with wider six-lane sections in Lansing, Flint, and near the interchange with I-94 in Port Huron. As for current I-69 projects in the state, Michigan appears to be currently working on several rebuilding projects in Clinton, Eaton, St. Clair, and Calhoun counties. These rebuilding projects are mostly reconstructing and modernizing bridges, but they also include rebuilding the highway with newer, improved, and longer-lasting pavement. Interesting fact about I-69 in Michigan is that its completion in 1992 marked the full completion of the interstate highway system in Michigan. So to the good folks of Michigan, there is no need to worry. Your section of I-69 is complete. Next stop is Indiana. I-69 enters the state near Angola and travels southwest through Fort Wayne into the capital of Indianapolis. This was a part of the original section of the highway discussed earlier in the video, completed in 1971. This segment reaches its end at an interchange with I-465, the Indianapolis Beltway. I-69 comes back to life in Martinsville, then heads south to Evansville, forming an eastern loop around that city before ending again at US-41 south of the city. I-69 is mostly a four-lane highway in Indiana, with six lanes through the Fort Wayne area and eight to six lanes north of Indianapolis. It has no spurs nor other auxiliary routes in Indiana. I-69 was actually intended to enter deeper into Indianapolis past the Beltway to meet I-65 and I-70 near downtown. This project was canceled, likely due to public opposition, and today one can spot ghost ramps on this interchange where I-69 was supposed to meet the other interstates. As of today, the two missing segments of I-69 in Indiana are the route around Indianapolis towards Martinsville and a section south of Evansville to reach the Ohio River and then cross into Kentucky. So now let's take a look and see what Indiana is doing to get this thing finished. The Indiana DOT has a webpage specifically devoted to I-69 called i69finishline.com. Very interactive. I love the racing thing. Here we can see the overall project completion percentage along with a breakdown of the progress in each individual county. All of these various sub-projects are projected to be wrapped up by the end of 2024. It will finally connect Evansville to Indianapolis with a modern interstate highway. But not so fast. The bigger, more complex gap to fill lies south of Evansville. That is upgrading US-41 to interstate standards and replacing the existing bridge over the Ohio River. This is being called the I-69 Ohio River Bridge Project. Being that this bridge goes into Kentucky, they are also involved in the project. The project is divided into three phases. The first phase will consist of upgrades from Kentucky 425 to US 60 where I-69 currently ends in that state. Construction has already started and is expected to be complete in 2025. The biggest, most expensive phase is phase two, which is the bridge itself. This is a bi-state project being worked on by both Indiana and Kentucky. The new four lane tolled bridge is to be constructed over the Ohio River while the existing US-41 bridge is to be demolished on the southbound lanes, with the northbound lanes remaining open for two-way traffic for those trying to avoid the toll. Officials say that the old bridge must be demolished due to the high maintenance cost for upkeep on the data infrastructure. Bridge design will begin in 2025, construction starting in 2027, and completion estimated for 2031. The third and final phase is being carried out by Indiana to link the bridge to Evansville. It includes a redesign of the current US-41 I-69 interchange. This section is to begin construction in 2024 and be completed by 2027. So all that in the show, it's a safe bet to expect to see I-69 in Indiana fully completed by 2031. And we're on to Kentucky. The section in Henderson concerning the Ohio River was covered with Indiana. So here we'll start with I-69 south of there. A large portion of I-69 is actually already completed in Kentucky. Prior to the arrival of I-69, Kentucky already had a system of controlled access parkways across the state. This made getting most of I-69 designated through the state much easier. I-69 is signed from Henderson to I-24, where it runs concurrently with 24 before splitting off to head southwest towards Mayfield. South of Mayfield, while the Purchase Parkway is a controlled access highway, it is not yet up to interstate highway standards and has not yet been signed as I-69. I-69 is to cross into Tennessee where the current Purchase Parkway ends at the state line once upgrades are complete. The Penny Route Parkway south of Nortonville will be signed with the Spur Route I-169, where it heads south 
to Hopkinsville and eventually meets its end at I-24. So it appears that I-69 in Kentucky will be fully completed once the Ohio River crossing is completed with Indiana. That's three states where the highway is nearly completed. So far, things are looking pretty good for I-69, huh? Next up is Tennessee. In Tennessee, I-69 is proposed to pass through the western portion of the state. It is to enter from Kentucky and South Fulton, where it is to then bypass Union City and Troy. It will then continue to bypass towns along the US-51 corridor as it makes its way to Memphis. In Memphis, the Federal Highway Administration has authorized Tennessee to extend I-69 from the interchange with I-40 to the I-55 interchange in Hernando, Mississippi. I drove this section on my channel back in December of last year and can confirm that Tennessee has not signed this section of I-69 despite authorization. So currently I-69 does not exist as a signed highway in any portion of Tennessee. It does however have an auxiliary route known as I-269 which forms a part of an outer beltway around Memphis and also extends into Mississippi. I-269 is expected to replace the Tennessee 385 designation to Millington in the future. Currently, Tennessee is considering building I-69 as a toll road as Congress withdrew $171 million in Tennessee road funding back in 2007 to fund their adventures in Iraq. Priorities, priorities. But let's go to the DOT and see exactly where things currently stand. On the Tennessee DOT website, I-69 is highlighted and a statement describing the purpose and importance of the highway and the state follows. Development of the proposed I-69 corridor will provide a continuous highway link designed to interstate highway standards from the Mexican border to the Canadian border, a route length of approximately 1,650 miles. The extension of the corridor incorporates several elements, including a new interstate route, I-69, that will serve Memphis, Tennessee. The proposed route has been divided into multiple sections, three of which have impact on the state of Tennessee. Then down below, you can click on the three individual sections for more information. However, there doesn't appear to be much activity here since 2017. Based on this, it looks like Tennessee definitely intends to complete the highway eventually, but we can conclude that funding is likely the reason for the lack of activity. On a related note to I-69, I wouldn't mind seeing I-269 extended across into Arkansas, either north or south of Memphis, as the two current Mississippi River crossings are near obsolete at this point. For Tennessee, the completion of I-69 is up in the air. Despite Governor Bill Lee and both U.S. Senators from Tennessee voting against it, the infrastructure bill is expected to deliver $5.8 billion to Tennessee for highways. But as of right now, there is no word on how much, if any, of this will go towards I-69. For now, I will say sometime in the 2040s for completing I-69 in Tennessee. Ah yes, the great state of Mississippi. In Mississippi, there actually is a completed portion of I-69. I-69 enters the state on a concurrency with I-55 south of Memphis in a suburban city of South Haven. It continues southbound until it reaches a cloverleaf interchange with I-269, the Memphis Outer Beltway. I-69 then continues for a short distance west until meeting its end near Tunica Resorts. The I-269 wrapped southeast through Mississippi's Memphis suburbs before heading back into Tennessee. Interesting note about this section of I-69 in Mississippi is that gaming revenue from the Tunica County casinos were used to help fund this project and get it completed ahead of schedule. After the current terminus, I-69 is expected to follow this routing, bypassing Tunica to the east, merging with US-61 to Clarksdale, then US-49 near Rich. Clarksdale already has an interstate quality bypass, which I-69 will use to join US-278. I-69 will continue along with US-278 until Marigold, where it will then form a western bypass of Cleveland and head west towards Benoit. After Benoit, I-69 with US-278 is planned to cross the mighty Mississippi River into Arkansas over a new bridge to be named the Charles W. Dean Bridge after the engineer from nearby Cleveland who originally proposed the bridge. Checking with the Mississippi DOT, it appears that none of the work for I-69 is scheduled to start between now and 2027. The 2017 to 2020 State Transportation Improvement Plan did include engineering and design work for the northernmost I-69 portion near Tunica, but nothing is ready for construction yet. The Dean Bridge, however, has cleared all environmental studies and is considered shovel ready for construction. The recently approved federal infrastructure bill does include $3.3 billion for Mississippi roads, but 
the problem with I-69 will be priorities. Past Tunica, I-69 doesn't appear to be as important for Mississippi as US-49 between Jackson and the coastal Biloxi Gulfport area where the highway needs significant upgrades. Also, the I-69 routing isn't ready for construction outside the Dean Bridge. Many studies and design work need to be completed first. And with that being the case, it's highly unlikely that the bridge will be funded for construction without the highway leading up to it being ready to go first. So in Mississippi, the completion date for I-69 is up in the air. It is the poorest state in the union, and even the federal infrastructure bill likely won't be enough to get the ball rolling here. Mississippi is one of the states that could be the last to see I-69 completed. For them, I wouldn't even say 2040s, I'd say 2050s, and that's mostly due to the cost of building the Dean Bridge. On to Arkansas, excuse me, Arkansas. I-69 in Arkansas currently does not exist on any signed portion of roadway. After entering Arkansas on the Charles Dean Bridge, I-69 will continue westward to US-65 and on to McGee. US-278 will also be rerouted onto this new alignment with I-69. I-69 will meet the future extension of I-530 near Monticello. US-278 will continue on its current route into Monticello and I-69 will be routed onto a new southern bypass around the city. Arkansas has actually already constructed a section of I-69 in this area. It is currently signed as the US-278 bypass and built with only two lanes, though to interstate standards. The right-of-way has been acquired for four lanes and it is expected that Arkansas will add the other two lanes once funding is acquired for construction. I-69 then continues moving south and west, meeting with US-82 just west of El Dorado with the crossing into Louisiana near Haynesville. In Arkansas, I-69 is often associated with the future extension of I-530 to Monticello from Pine Bluff. This extension, along with I-69, are intended to connect this isolated portion of Arkansas to the rest of the state and hopefully induce some demand in the region. Arkansas City in particular, which sits near the proposed Dean Bridge crossing, is extremely desolate and isolated. It's almost as if I-69 being built through here would open the city up to the rest of the modern world. Arkansas DOT makes it difficult to locate and track the progress of current projects, but it appears that outside of some environmental studies from 10 years ago, there isn't much officially going on with I-69 in this state. Arkansas is expected to receive $3.6 billion from the infrastructure bill for highways, but like Mississippi, other projects will likely take priority over for I-69. I could see them continuing to build out the highway slowly as a two-lane road, but for the full controlled access freeway, I wouldn't expect completion until the 2050s, barring some surprise infrastructure spending from Congress. Now there's Louisiana. Here's where things get really doubtful. In Louisiana, I-69 is not currently signed, nor any future corridors upgraded or constructed. I-69 will enter the state near Haynesville and move southwest towards Shreveport. It will have an interchange with I-20 near Halton, move southwest around Barksdale Air Force Base, and cross I-49 near Stonewall. This will form the final section of a sort of beltway highway around Shreveport. From there, it will head southwest towards Logansport, where it will then cross into Texas. Of all the states that I-69 is to go through, I say Louisiana is the least likely to see the highway built anytime soon. On the priority list is going to rank very low for quite some time. Louisiana has other issues that require major attention and big dollars, such as completing I-49 through Lafayette to New Orleans, and also the big problem that is figuring out how to get I-49 pushed through Shreveport, let alone the actual construction construction once that's resolved. Then there is the dated, dangerous I-10 bridges in both Lake Charles and Baton Rouge that are in urgent need of reconstruction. And many of the I-10 bridges across the bayous in the state are nearing the end of their useful life. Louisiana has an impending multi-billion dollar infrastructure nightmare approaching with those bridges on I-10 that no one seems to be talking about. So outside of significant federal funding, this is the state where I doubt we will see I-69 even begin construction for at least 20 to 30 years. Louisiana DOTD is the only state transportation agency that makes zero mention of I-69. That means it's not even on the state's radar for now. Louisiana is receiving $5.9 billion for highways, but again, I-69 is likely to be at the bottom of the priority list given the other issues facing the state. Louisiana looks like it will be the biggest roadblock for I-69's completion. And finally, there is Texas, home of some of the most impressive highway infrastructure in America. Texas has never been one to be afraid to put money up to get things done. Leading by example with this vast highway network, 
the Texas metros of Houston and Dallas move traffic more effectively than any other top 10 metro in America, all while being two of the fastest growing. So it's no surprise that I-69 is getting some love in the Lone Star State. Here we can see an overview of the planned route of I-69 through Texas. It will enter the state from Louisiana along the current US-84 corridor and follow that route until Tanaha. After Tanaha, it will follow the US-59 corridor to Houston through the cities of Nagadotes, Lufkin, Livingston, Shepard, and Cleveland. I-69 is actually completed and signed through the entire Houston metro area between Cleveland and Rosenberg. I filmed part of this highway back in January on this channel and can confirm as such. Video will be linked in the description. After Rosenberg, the highway is not yet signed, but I-69 will continue along the US-59 corridor to Victoria. After Victoria is where things get interesting. South of Victoria, I-69 will split into I-69 East and I-69 West. I-69 East will follow the US-77 corridor towards Corpus Christi. Bypassing the city to the east, a portion of this section is already signed as I-69 East. It continues along the US-77 corridor until Raymondville, where I-69 East is again signed and completed from there until the Mexican border in Brownsville. Back in Victoria, I-69 West will continue along the US-59 corridor through George West and to Laredo. In Laredo, I-69 West is complete between I-35 and the Mexican border. And yet, a third leg of I-69 breaks off in George West. I-69 Central splits from I-69 West here and heads due south along the US-281 corridor to end at Interstate 2 in Far Texas near the Mexican border. I-69 Central is considered complete here and it is not expected to continue with the US-281 past I-2 to the Mexican border. In Texas, I-69 will have a spur route that extends north along the US-59 corridor from Tanaha to Texarkana. This spur is expected to be signed as I-369. On I-69 East near Brownsville, there would be an I-169 spur that heads towards South Padre Island. Now, Texas DOT has a very clean and straightforward site where you can see a map of I-69, all of its stems, and auxiliary routes. Completed sections are in red, sections under construction are in orange. On this page, we can see a breakdown of which sections are funded versus unfunded. Overall, Texas clearly has plans and is committed to building the entirety of I-69 in the state. It appears that they have taken an approach that involves building a corridor around or through the cities first, and then building the highway between the cities last. As we can see, the highway is completed all through the Houston area. The current cost to complete the unfunded but construction ready portions is approximately $4 billion and Texas is to receive $27.5 billion for highways from the infrastructure bill. I'll link both of these pages in the description for any of you who want to browse through in detail for yourself. In Texas, I wouldn't be surprised to see the highway fully completed by the late 2030s or mid 2040s at the latest. So to wrap it all up for I-69, in Michigan, I-69 travels from Port Huron to the Indiana state line south of Coldwater and it is complete. In Indiana, the highway continues south through Fort Wayne to Indianapolis, where it needs upgrades south of the city on Indiana 37. From Martinsville to Evansville, it is complete. With the Ohio River Bridge crossing scheduled for completion in 2031, I-69 will be completed in Indiana by 2031. Kentucky has mostly built out its section of I-69 and the highway will be completed by 2031, also waiting on the Ohio River Bridge. In Tennessee, we might see it in the 2040s. Mississippi, being a poorer state and the cost of the Dean Bridge, things might take until the 2050s. Arkansas doesn't have any major bridge crossings to build, but also being a poorer state, I would say 2050s here, with a two-lane version of future I-69 possibly being built out by the 2040s. Louisiana is also poor, but has other pressing priorities, so it's also the 2050s and beyond for them. While Big Texas could have this thing wrapped up by the early to mid 2040s. So unlike I-73 and the I-74 extension that I talked about before, all states have expressed a desire and intention to build I-69. So eventually it will be built. With that being said, what do you guys think? When do you think we can expect to see a completed I-69 super highway? Have you driven on I-69 in your state? Do you want to see it completed? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you on the next trip coming soon to a town near you.